Greetings from the beachhead. I have to make a quick trip out to California. My sister's husband passed away and there's going to be a memorial service and I'm going out for that. I'm from California originally. That is going to be in the San Joaquin Valley where the temperatures are in the 100s or hovering, you know, upper 90s into the 100s and the air quality is poor. Yikes. I'm also going to be staying with my brother for a little while longer in Monterey, so that'll be a cooler and totally different climate. I think the temperatures there are in the 60s, and then they go into the 50s at night. All of this is going to be tricky because I ha I'm coming back United, and on United, I can only take a bag that fits under my seat. I can't have like a roller container thing of a bobber. I have to pack very, very small. So let's get started packing my bags. I've got stuff out here to the left. I've got a little plastic baggie that I will use for the liquids. Here are the birds squawking in the background. I'm going to start by taking off my makeup. I'm going to be getting there at night, and the first thing I'll need to do is get the makeup off. This is One Love Organic Skin Savior. I can use this to take off eye makeup, skin makeup, all of that without stripping my face. I love to just get the little try me kits and this is great for traveling with. I use it often to travel with. One thing I like about this, not a liquid. The next thing I'll do is cleanse my face at least the first time and this has a mild exfoliant. It is One Love Organics Brand New Day. Again, I get that in the try me kit. This has pineapple enzymes and it's a powder. So again, no worries about liquids at all. I really like this. This is one I do use fairly often in my regular routine. And then finally, I'll wash once again, just to make sure that the skin is nice and clean. I have been using this Ayurvedic soap. This one is vanilla neem. There's another one that's rose that's supposed to be for dry skin, which seems like it would be more of my skin type. But I find that I like this one better. It doesn't strip the skin. It doesn't leave a film. It's a really, really mild soap. I like it. I use it every day but it will disappear on you in your shower. What I do with this is I cut it and you can see where it's been cut. I will just slice off a small amount and take that with me. When I'm done and coming home, whatever's left over, I'll throw away. But even when I'm at home, I slice off pieces of it to use. The next product is a regular in my skin routine. I love this stuff. This is the Mad Hippie Exfoliating Serum. There's several Mad Hippie products that I'm using that I really, really like. This one is a reorder. I've reordered it a few times. It's an exfoliating serum. It works really, really well. They have a vitamin A one as well, and you can use them in tandem, like the exfoliating serum one night and the vitamin A the next night. I didn't like the vitamin A. It dried me out. So I'm using that now on my hands and my arms just to finish using it. I was trying to kind of bear with it and use it on my skin, and at some point I went, eh, I'm just not... I'll, I'll, I'm not, this is not working for me at all. Mad Hippie Exfoliating Serum is what I will take with me. At home, I alternate it with Luna Oil, Sunday Riley Luna Oil. So one night, the exfoliating serum, the next night, the Luna Oil. And then usually on the third night, I do some sort of mask routine. But you put this on, you wait 10 minutes. That's really important. So you put it on, you wait 10 minutes before you do your next step. The next step is to moisturize. For my first moisturizer, and again, these aren't so much moisturizers as sealing in what moisture I have, but I'm going to use this Celtic Complexion Eye Elixir, is it called? I'm going to roll this on under the eyes and around the brow bone area. And I'm going to use Celtic Complexion Cream. This is a little mini size travel jar. I just keep the travel jar and refill it because I use Celtic Complexion Cream all the time. I used to have super, 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 super dry skin. And I was always in this process of kind of using products on it, especially water-based moisturizers that would feel really good, almost like you put it on and it feels like what it feels like to put lotion on after you come out of a shower. And then you give it an hour or two hours, and as the day goes on, you start to get that alligator skin. So Celtic Complexion Cream really changed my skin. I have normal skin now as long as I take care of it. So we use this, and it keeps my skin normal. I don't use it every night in the summer. I probably will use it every night in the San Joaquin Valley. In Monterey, in the Sierra, moist conditions, probably not. So I play it by ear, and if I'm feeling dry, then this is definitely going to go on my skin, and if not, it's not. 
And that is pretty much it for the nighttime routine. For the morning, I will wake up. I will wash my face with that soap because I have exfoliated overnight. So I just want to get away anything dead that's happened overnight. Once I've done that, the very first thing I do is put on a C product. And the C product I love, I use, I've been using for years. It is the Philosophy Turbo Booster C Powder. It's a powder. You add it to any cream product that you have to make it into a vitamin C product. It's a powder, it's not preserved, so there aren't any uglies in it, and it's just super, super effective. I've tried True Serum, I've tried an, any number of C serums, and they just don't work as well as this worked. It's a little pricey, but it lasts a long time. I remember one time, it's probably back in the Wheat and Beauty archives, or whatever you want to call them on YouTube, I tried to, to dupe it. I thought, I'm just going to make my own, and I bought all these you know, tubs of all the stuff that's supposed to be in here and their powders and I was going to mix them myself. And so it was like over a hundred dollars to get the stuff and I got it and it was gritty and it didn't absorb as well. There were all sorts of issues with it. That was my one and only attempt to dupe this product. Many times when I go into Sephora to repurchase this, they say to me, oh, there's an updated product. Don't you want their C whatever? And I say, no, this is what I want. This is what I use. Don't try and give me another C product. This is it. That C product has to be mixed into something. It has to dissolve in something, and it needs a water-based product for that to work at its most effective. So this is one place where I use a water-based cream product. You don't hear me say it very often, but yeah, I'm using a water-based cream product. The one I'm liking to use for that purpose is the Mad Hippie Face Cream. I really have been taken with Mad Hippie. I first started with the exfoliating product and that was so good that I said, heck, I'm going to try some more of their products. Then I tried the sunscreen and I like that as well. And so then I was emboldened to try the face cream. So yeah, this is what I use to mix into that C product. It's kind of big, so I'm going to depot some because I don't want to take this whole big thing. I have a lot of little sample jars hanging around. So I'm going to keep this out and put it into a smaller container. And probably, yeah, as I'm looking at it, that exfoliating serum, I'm going to put into a smaller vial as well. Now, this is a little backwards because normally you would put serums on and then the face cream afterwards. But since the C really needs to be the first thing that is on my skin, I start by using that C product first. From there, I go with two serums. I go with the Vita de Fleur Moisturizing Serum from Celtic Complexion and the Youth Infusion Serum from Celtic Complexion. At one point, she sold a set of these, and there were three of these little roller balls, and the third one was the calming serum, which I also have, but I don't need to travel with it because uh, there's nothing happening on my face that needs calming. There's no dry patches, there's no scratchy patches, there's no, ac you know, there's just nothing happening. Most of the time, again, you know, since I've been using the Celtic Complexion products, my skin is just pretty dang normal, which is nothing to complain about. I'm, I'm happy. So I every day use these. What I do is I get the vials like this, and then when these run out, I just refill them. The thing I like the best about it is that uh, it helps me not to overuse the product. Just kind of roll them on. You know, you might say, oh, it's going to get dirty. When I refill them, I clean them first and then refill the vial, and that's that. These are, again, super tiny. These are liquids, so these have to go in my liquid bag, but they're super duper tiny. For eyes, I'm going to use this again. Then I will use a little of the Mad Hippie eye cream. Again, a good product, good ingredients. I love it that they use food grade preservatives. These are water-based products, so they have to be preserved with something. A lot of times it's potassium sorbate. Really, really mild food grade preservative. Excellent ingredients in it. I just like the philosophy of Mad Hippie. I like what I'm getting. I like the price point. That exfoliating serum, for example, is so much less expensive. It's not cheap, but it's so much less expensive than, say, the Luna oil, the Luna Night oil from Sunday Riley. So Mad Hippie is a line worth looking into if you haven't, haven't seen it. 
Since this is a rather large container, I'm also going to keep it out and just to pot some into a little tiny travel vial. That's all I'll need for that. Only going for a week. The next step will be sunscreen. I'm a big sunscreen user, so the Mad Hippie Facial SPF, definitely depotting. I'm not taking this big honking thing. These three products are all considered, you know, cream or a liquid. They're going to have to go into my liquid bag. I don't want to be taking them up with big things, so all of this will get depotted into smaller little travel size vials that I can use. I just poured sample jars and then use them when I travel. You know, when I get the teeny ones, I'm like, ooh, this is good. You know, I'm not even saying, oh gosh, that's not very much product to try this out with. I'm instead saying, great jar. I'm going to love using that. So even if I don't like the product in it, I don't care because I've got a great travel jar. Let's see, what else is in there? Okay, my razor just lives in my suitcase. I'll buy a new toothbrush, but I always keep a toothbrush in there just in case I should forget it happens. I've got a comb. I've got a nail file. Those things live in my suitcase. Dental floss, of course, and then my toothpaste, which isn't natural. It's just sensodyne for sensitive teeth. This is what my dentist wants me to use. She gives me little free samples like this to travel with. So, yeah, I'll use it. The other thing I'll do is grab some perfume samples. I don't use perfume every day. I'm not a big perfume user. I'm really aware that I'm in a lot of places where people who are sensitive to smells might not be too happy. But every once in a while, uh, if I'm going someplace and it seems appropriate to wear perfume, I will. I have um, the Kat Von D Saints and Sinners. You can see I've spritzed it a bit, but I got a little bit of that and um, the Guerlain. So I'll just take those with me, and if it seems like a perfume sort of day, I'll go ahead and use those. But otherwise, I'll just smell like me, I guess. One other product that it is important for me to bring is oil. I just need an oil. Sometimes it's an emu oil. Sometimes it's a hemp oil. Just an oil. I have one of these little vials of the Josie Marin's argan oil. I find it no better, no worse than other argan oils. You can certainly find them cheaper. But I have this sample. I have to oil my hair every day. I only wash my hair once a week, but I have to oil it every day. I'm Portuguese, and so my hair is um, kind of ethnic hair, I guess you could say, and it's very, very dry. So I have to oil it. I mean, that's just part of my routine is that every day I oil my hair. This then I can use for oiling my hair. And if after I put on my sunscreen and I wait my 20 minutes, if my face feels at all dry, I'll put this on before putting anything on over it, any kind of makeup on over it. So I always have to have some drop of some sort of moisturizing oil, argan oil, emu oil, hemp oil. It, it really doesn't matter what kind of oil. I've already got all the good nourishing oils going on in my skin. I will also use that in lieu of body lotion. I don't usually use body lotions on a regular basis. If I'm feeling dry, I just kind of take a little bit of oil and rub over the skin. Okay, for foundation, I don't really need a foundation. My skin is okay without it. I need a concealer for under eyes badly every single day. But in terms of, you know, a foundation that needs to cover something, I don't need that. And it's really strange. Like, you know, I was just out eating dinner with my husband the other night and somebody came over. They had been eating across from us and they just came over and the woman said to me, you have the most beautiful complexion. Not like you're wearing the most beautiful makeup, but you have the most beautiful complexion. And I get that, and it's really strange to me. This one was older, but I often get it from young people. If I go into Sephora, they are always like, what do you use on your skin? What do you use on your skin? And I find it so odd because, you know, I'm pushing 60, I'm 58 and a half, and every once in a while, you know, somebody will, somebody younger just asks me that question, and it always is kind of an odd odd thing because I, I think, yeah, I'm old, you know, I'm getting there. At any rate, I don't really need foundation, but I do need sunscreen. The advice from the American Cancer Society is layer, layer, layer. So I know I have put on sunscreen and I know it's not enough. I know we do not use enough sunscreen. We have to layer, layer, layer and reapply. So layer one of the sunscreen is the Mad Hippie. It is a white cast. It is going to leave a white cast. The ingredient, the physical sunblock that is being used is zinc oxide. Put it on, rub it in, let it sink into your skin. But then you are going to have kind of a white cast. And so at this point, it's time to put some makeup on over it. 
Also, it's very important that it have sunscreen because this is layer number two of sunscreen. So I'm going to use the all natural face. This works for me. It's an inexpensive foundation. I don't need it to cover anything. I just need something that is another layer between me and the sun. Kind of masks that white cast of the sunscreen. The shade I use, I have it in several shades in front of me, but the shade I'm going to use is this one called Tan Warm. This is a pretty good match for me right now. So I brought the Tan Warm and I will put this on all over my face like you normally do. The one thing I can say is I, I find that those oval brushes work best and then I do go ahead and take a dry sponge and punch it in. A wet sponge with this doesn't work. I need a dry sponge. When they sell you the product, they sell it with these little uh, triangle sponges and those those work just as well as any other dry sponge but I also sometimes use a, a dry beauty blender just whatever I've got. Ah, I know what I was going to tell you in case I go out at night and it's a possibility that we will be going out after the memorial service if I'm not in the sun I brought some Gressa foundation. The Gressa foundation I I'll have to do a whole nother video on that. But at any rate, I, I travel with this little teeny vial of it. It has no sunscreen in it. So as a daily kind of thing, it's not very useful for me. Next, I'm going to take the Hint Beauty Powder and put that on. That is layer three. This actually has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in it, both sun products. Some people think there are issues with titanium dioxide. I'm okay with titanium dioxide. This is actually the only product I'm using right now that has titanium dioxide. I ran out of my Loose Hint Beauty powders, and so I'm just going to use my compact. It's basically the loose powder they have, although this one does, I notice, have the titanium dioxide in it, and of course it's pressed, so there are some additional products. But this is a nice, clean powder, and it works well for me. This is also, I was saying with the sunscreen, layer, 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 and then reapply. This is how I reapply sunscreen during the day. Once I've done that, I will be looking ghostly flat and pale. And so I have to do some, bring some light back to the face for that. And this works. I can use it. There's no problem with using the cream over the powder. I have these other colors of the All Natural Face. This one is Tan Warmest. That means it's two shades darker than my Tan Warm, the way they do their names. Tan Warm, Tan Warmer, Tan Warmest. So basically, stripe down a line, pat it in with that puppy. And for the, the highlighting shade to give relief to the contour, I use this one. This is Porcelain Goddess, so this actually shifts over. It, it, it's going to be too much for me to explain, but the way the All Natural Face works, they have these different shade ranges, and I fit into a couple of them. I like the tan range right now because I am kind of more golden in the summer. My golden skin tones come out. In the winter, I'm more pink, and this is from the pink line. I'll just use this uh, Porcelain Goddess and use that here and here and, you know, all the normal places you would do a contour and highlight routine. It's fairly natural. It's not like I'm not looking like a Kardashian or anything like that. It's, it's just a pretty natural contour. For blush, a bunch of samples. These are a bunch of samples from Meow Cosmetics. And I love to have these little baggies full of minerals. These are not going anywhere in terms of um, shelf life. They're rocks, right? It's just rocks. They're not preserved. They don't have to be preserved. So I have like lots and lots and lots of these little samples. One of these little samples will last me at least a week. This is like overkill. I'm going for seven days, but I have different color choices. And look at this. It's very, very flat. For highlighter, I grabbed my Brigia Orb. This is a blue eyeshadow or highlighter. It's like that Kat Von D Alchemy palette where you can use them as eyeshadows or you can use it um, as a highlighter. So I'll be using it as a highlighter. For eyeshadow, I'm going to do the same. Basically, I take all of these little samples that I have and that I've collected over the, the years. I've got a lot of them, and you can see there's different colors. That I'll probably, this one I'll probably use for a liner. That's from Shiro. Another color I can use for a liner, some pretty lid shades from Meow, another liner color from Shiro, a color that I can use as a 
transition or contour color in the eyes, I can also use the blush colors. Just a whole bunch of eyeshadow samples and I'll put together various looks using these. The other eyeshadow I always keep with me is this one. It's in a different vial, but this is Enchanted. This is that color that I love so much from Clean Cauldron. And whenever I mess up a look, I put this on my eyes in the corner and it does magical things. So I love that. The only thing I can possibly compare it to is the Stila liquidy kind of eyeshadows that they have. But this one is not actually a wet shade. It's dry. It just looks wet all the time. I love that shade. So yeah, I keep my little travel pack with that. So if something goes wrong, I got it. I can see one thing I have forgotten is a brow product. I have the Hint Beauty Brow Note to Self. I better grab that or I won't have any brows. That would not be good. I need to just throw the brow powder in my travel kit so that I don't get caught with no brows one time, which could happen because as you can see, I forgot about that. Normally when I do my brows, I use that Urzuli highlighter for the brow bone. I've also been playing, I've been using that in the inner corner and right here on this little area right here to brighten. But in my travel kit, I keep this Jane Iredale product, which works okay. I like the Urzoli better, but on one end it has a kind of pink color and you can use that pink color to clean up the brows. And it also has a white color there. So those will work as brow cleanup and those kind of just live in my travel kits. For liners I'm going to bring the All Natural Face Diva Sticks. I'm going to bring this one in black coal. I'll use that with a brush to line the top of the eye. I'm going to use the dark brown which I use every day to tight line and I also have Fawn which is you know, kind of a little tiny one at this point, but I use that sometimes underneath the eyes just to give a little bit of definition. But you say you've forgotten eyeshadow primer, and that's because I don't use it. I'll, I'll go ahead and just use my regular concealer to prime my eyes with. It's not natural. It's not even highly recommended. It's a product I get off of Amazon. It's the Photo Touch Mineral Concealer. I don't know. I've tried a lot of different concealers. I have a different one on today. It's just the one I like the best, so I continue to use this. I, I can't help myself, and I set it with this Fusion of Color Awake. It's a purple powder, and I've mixed in a little bit of the RMS Uncover with it so that it has that really silky texture. It feels a lot like the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder when it's on the eyes. So that works super well to clean up with. I'm really happy with that product. For mascara, I just use the Physicians Formula Organic Wear. What else have I forgotten? Lips. Lips, lip balm, lip liners. Jane Iredale and, gosh, my Amory Borlands, which they have discontinued, but I still have some left. And that'll be it. I think I've got everything. I've cleaned my face. I've got sunscreen on, I've layered, 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 I've got the reapply, I have blush, I have contour, I have eyeliner, I have mascara, I have eyeshadows, I have eyebrow, I have highlighters there, I have a highlighter for here. I'm pretty sure I've gotten everything I need except one last product. Most people finish with powder, and I do finish with powder. Sometimes I'm on the fence. It'll depend on how much room I have in the little tiny bag that I have to have that fits underneath the, the cushion. But normally, um, I would bring that RMS powder. It's in a rather big tub, and it, that stuff will fly everywhere, that silica powder. So I don't like to depot that. I wish there were a little travel size of that. That would be convenient. But mostly to set my makeup, I have a dry T-zone. If I'm going to get dry, it's going to be sink right through here. It'll be these wrinkles here, this here, and these puppies here, a little right there under the chin, and here. Those are all the places where I will get dry. So I use the Celtic Complexion Winter Skin Balm, and basically I just touch up like this. Um, this is a little travel package too. This was like a trot. When she first made it, she came out with this delivery system, which I prefer to the tube that it comes in. So I keep this in a travel pack and basically I take the product and I 
put it back in here. So this one is, is smaller, flatter, easier to travel with. And I just, you know, I put it on like this and just get some kind of layer to hold the moisture in my skin. And this works super duper well. It doesn't like shine at my face or anything. You really can't tell that I have it on, but I can tell I have it on. I think I've done okay. I won't bring shampoo because I only wash my hair once a week. I won't bring lotion because I'll, I'll do the um, oils on my skin if I need to. I did bring deodorant. I travel with the little MBs. This is a natural product. I like the, the scent Cocoa Haze. It's the only scent I like. But I love these to travel with because, yeah, that's a deodorant. That is it. That is stinking small. I'm also bringing a little bit of the All Natural Face Love Dust. Love Dust smells like cocoa. And it's basically a really sparkly thing that you can, you know, like put on your... Um, I use a brush when I put it on, but you can put it on collarbones and you know down the chest and so, so I'm bringing a little love dust sample with me. I also have a, a container of it but again I don't want to bring the whole jar of it that would be too big. Okay that is it for my itty bitty travel bag. I think I'm going to make it just fine. I'll get everything into that quart size container that plastic bag that goes through the liquids and the security with room to spare, especially once I depot those products. I've got makeup, I've got skincare. Now I just have to pack clothes. And oh yeah, I'll have to have earrings and stuff like that. But that's tomorrow. I'm, I'm really delighted that I didn't get interrupted. The phone didn't ring. My husband didn't come back from hitting golf balls. The dog and the bird didn't go off too many times. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I actually got a video in. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Bye.